Well, good evening. I hope you can hear me. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight uh, as we continue this episode, another episode of Wonderful Words of Life. We're thinking of the words of the Saviour when he was here and how these statements that he made are relevant for us today. I want to read tonight two rhetorical questions the Lord Jesus asked. These are questions, of course, that really need no answer. The answer is so obvious that no response is required. And these two questions are about profit and loss, and we find them in Mark's Gospel, chapter 8, and they're in verses 36 and 37. This is the Lord Jesus speaking, and he says, For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Amen. Here are two questions that we need to consider. Questions that are rhetorical. They don't really require a response. First of all, the Lord Jesus says, just suppose that you could gain the whole world. Let's just think about that for a moment. What does it mean? What did the Lord mean when he said, if a man were to gain the whole world? Well, if you can imagine, if you can stretch your mind to such a thing, if you can imagine owning all the wealth in the world, if you can imagine the world of fame, if you can imagine the world of pleasure, the world of entertainment, the world of popularity, the world of sport, of culture, of adventure, of travel, everything that people seek in this world. If you can imagine one individual possessing everything. So people get quite excited, don't they, about the lottery and the thought of maybe winning a few hundred thousand pounds, a few million pounds. And it's staggering to think, well, what would you do with such wealth? But can you imagine the Lord Jesus is, is putting across this hypothetical situation of somebody gaining the entire world, having everything that the world has to offer. Nothing would be forbidden. You could go anywhere. You could travel anywhere. You could do anything. You could have what you wanted. You could behave as you pleased. You had everything. You might say, well, that's a tremendous gain. <laughs> to imagine that that's so hypothetical, but imagine somebody had all that. The Lord Jesus says, well, keep that in your mind. Imagine it's possible to gain the whole world, but at the same time, if you lost your soul, the Lord Jesus says, what would it profit you? In other words, what would the benefit be? He's really saying, you do the sums, work it out yourself. And of course, the answer is, it would profit you absolutely nothing. In other words, the Lord Jesus is saying, your soul is worth more than all the pleasures, all the wealth, all the riches of the world combined cannot even compare with the value of your soul. And so he says, what would it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? But then the second question, and sometimes we misunderstand this question, he says, or what will a man give in exchange for a soul? Uh, sometimes we interpret this as though the Lord had said, what will a man take in exchange for a soul? And we talk about people who've sold their souls because they want pleasure or they want something. They want something in life, some great sin or some uh, thing that they must have, and they've sold their souls to get it. That's not what the Lord Jesus is saying. He doesn't say, what would you take to exchange your soul? He's saying, what would you give to exchange your soul? In other words, he's saying, what would somebody possibly give to get their soul back? A paraphrase has put it like this. What can a man offer to buy back his soul once he has lost it? And the answer is the same. You might think, I would give everything. If I was in danger of losing my soul, I would give everything to buy it back. But in actual fact, you can give nothing. You would give everything you had. You'd give everything you possessed. But you could give nothing. Now, these are amazing statements the Lord Jesus makes, and I suppose anyone listening, they might have to think about this for a minute. They may have to try and work it out, but 
I'm sure the message that would get across loud and clear is this, that your soul is the most important, the most precious, the most valuable thing that you will ever possess. I want to think of three reasons why your soul is the most precious, important thing that you will ever have. First of all, in a sense, your soul is the real you. Did you notice the Lord Jesus, he didn't say, if a man uh, gains the whole world and loses his soul, he says, loses his own soul. In a sense, this is, this is individual personality, and this is the very core of your being. This is essentially who you are. Now, our world is so obsessed with material things. But the Lord Jesus said on another occasion, he said, don't think for a minute that a man's life, a person's life, consists of the sum total of what they possess. And, uh, of course, the Bible tells us that we brought nothing into the world. And when we leave the world, we'll take nothing out. It's very interesting that in the book of Job, one of the earliest books in the Bible, uh, Job says, naked, I came into the world. And when I leave the world, I'll be naked as well. There was a story told of a, a very rich man who died. And the question was asked, what did he leave? And the answer was, he left everything. He left everything. Dear friends, we're surrounded by a world that, that is obsessed with material things and amassing wealth. And yet we know, and the Bible teaches us, that a day is coming when it's all got to be left behind. We've got to leave everything behind. And isn't it incredible that we can be so concerned and we can work our fingers to the bone to try and amass wealth that we're going to leave behind one day, and yet we fail to take care, we neglect our souls, the real person. Of course, it's right to look after our bodies, but the Bible teaches us that we are more than a body. It's right to look after our minds, our mental health, but the Bible teaches us we're more than a mind. There is a deep spiritual core to our being. And in fact, when God created man, you read that God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And so essentially, the soul is used, the word is used in different ways in the Bible, but really what we're thinking of here is that this is the real you, the essential you. And so it's important, it's precious, it's valuable, because this is really who you are. It's the spiritual core of your being. But then secondly, the soul is so precious and so important and so vital simply because the soul is going to last forever. Death does not mean the end of your existence. Death is the separation of the physical and the spiritual. And so at the moment of death, that occurs. There's great debate in scientific circles as to exactly when the moment of death occurs, and it's very difficult to pinpoint it at times. With our modern medicine, we can hardly pinpoint when a person actually dies, but it happens, according to the Bible, at the very moment when there is a separation between what is material and what is spiritual, when the soul leaves the body. And the amazing thing is this, that once that occurs, the body begins to decay, it is placed in the earth, it will return to the dust. God said to Adam, dust you are, and to dust you will return, and the body will become part of the earth, and will, will become, the atoms will become indistinguishable with the earth. But at the same time, the soul will exist and go on and go on and go on and exist eternally and exist continually. And the Lord Jesus talks here about the possibility of your soul being lost eternally. And he talks about the possibility of your soul being saved eternally. Think about these two great options 
What a wonderful thing it is to know that after this life is over, my soul that will exist forever and ever and ever is eternally safe and secure and saved. What a dreadful thing to imagine that once life is over, my soul that will exist forever could be eternally lost. No wonder the Lord Jesus says here, the important thing is to ensure that your soul is not lost. The important thing is to ensure that your soul is saved. Somebody has said, to lose your wealth is much, to lose your health is more, but to lose your soul is such a loss that nothing can restore. This weekend down in Glasgow, the great and good from all over the world are meeting to try and save the planet. We've heard this, it's been drummed into us through the media, that we've only got two weeks, 14 days to save the planet. We're all concerned about the future of our planet. And yet, dear friends, the Bible tells us this planet one day, this universe is all going to be burned up. It's all going to be dissolved. It's all going to evaporate. And even when that happens, your soul will still be existing forever and forever and forever. You will live on. Your never dying soul will either be in the bliss of heaven or in the torment of hell forever and forever and forever. No wonder the Lord Jesus says you cannot estimate the value, the importance of your soul. It's the real you. It's the true spiritual part of who you are. But secondly, it's that part of you that will go on and on and on and on forever. Now, don't be shocked by this, but I'm going to say that most people listening to my voice tonight, in 50 years, you'll be no more. That's quite true. In 50 years, in the natural course of things, most of us will have died. But in 50 years, our souls will live on and on and on eternally. And our lives will seem just like a flicker, just like a moment, compared with the unending ages of eternity. How important, how vital it is to attend to our souls. Thirdly, the soul is valuable because it's the real you. It's valuable because it will exist forever, either in the bliss of heaven or in the torment of hell. But it's valuable in this respect that the greatest price was paid for it. I think we're amazed at times uh, at the price that some people will pay for things, whether it is property, whether it's land, whether it's a painting, whether it's even an animal, people will pay fantastic prices for valuable things. It's staggering to think sometimes how much people will pay. But dear friends, let me just say this, that there was an incalculable price paid for the salvation of your soul. Your soul cost God everything. When the Lord Jesus, the Son of God, when God the Son gave himself on the cross, it was the greatest price that was ever paid. It was the greatest sacrifice that was ever made. And he did it all to save your soul. He did it so that your soul would be saved and forgiven and redeemed and made right with God and ready for heaven. It was the greatest price that was ever paid. And when Jesus died on the cross, he not only endured the maltreatment, the abuse of men, the physical sufferings that they inflicted on him. He not only endured the hostile attacks of satanic powers, but more than that, he endured on the cross the righteous wrath and anger of a holy God against our sins. Why? So that your soul might be saved. He paid the price. He gave himself. It is an inestimable value, an inestimable price that he paid, the value. It was an infinitely valuable sacrifice when he gave himself. And if I can say this reverently, God could give no more. And he gave it to save you soul. 
A man wrote this hymn not so long ago, had it not been for a place called Mount Calvary, had it not been for the old rugged cross, had it not been for a man called Jesus, then forever my soul would be lost. Dear friends, can I appeal to you tonight? If you are not saved, if your sins have never been forgiven, let me assure you of this, that God has given his son for the salvation of your soul, that Jesus Christ has died on the cross and paid the infinite price of salvation. He has given himself, and as a result, your soul can be saved. As I close tonight, I just want to remind you of the words of the Lord Jesus. What shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The Bible tells us, writing to Christians, the writer to the Hebrews, he says this, we are those who have believed to the saving of our souls. I just want to ask you as we close, have you believed? Is your soul saved? Or is the dreadful possibility still hanging over you that your eternal, never dying soul could be lost forever? Well, it need not be. It need not be. You can be one of those who believe to the saving of the souls. We're going to close in prayer. If you've never turned in repentance and faith to Jesus Christ, now is the time to do it. He is able to save your soul. He is able to forgive your sins. He's able to give you new life because he paid the price on the cross. And if you turn to him, even as we pray tonight, then you will be one of those who have believed to the saving of their souls. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we give thanks for the wonder of the possibility that we can be saved and saved forever, that our sins can be forgiven, we can be made right with thee, we can be made ready for heaven, all because Christ died for our sins. We thank thee he rose from the dead, and we praise thee that if, if someone trusts in him even tonight and believes in him, then their precious soul will be saved. We pray for thy blessing as we consider the words of the Savior, in his precious name. Amen.